I'm joined by Uwe Parpart. He is Chief Economist and Strategist at Cancer Fitzgerald here in Hong Kong. He's right here in the studio with me for once. Yeah. So thanks for coming in. You're very skeptical about these stress tests. Tell us why. Well, it's sort of a you damned if you do and damned if you don't kind of situation. Because if uh, the, the basic exposure of the European banks is to the sovereign debt of the southern tier. Now, if, uh, you know, that, if you're going to do a real stress test, you're going to have to set that debt down by about 60 percent, 70 percent. And that's not happening. And that's not happening. Because if, that were to, if, he, if the regulator were to say that's a possibility, he would be contradicting the politicians who are saying there is no such thing as a default. So the only thing they can do is set it down by 15 percent. At 15 percent, the market is going to laugh at it. Right. So, so, no. so if uh, okay. So if, if they say it's more than fifteen percent, right. well, then the market. Well, the then market the market say, "Oh my God!" <laughs> yeah. You know, this if, is if going they're downhill, worried, right? if they're worried, so, maybe they know something. Right. Okay. So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right. If you do do them, right. and people fail these stress tests, if <laughs> banks fail, then European governments are going to have to put up the cash to bail them out if these guys can't raise it on the market. Right. Are you confident in that process? Well, I mean, that's, that's going to happen because they've already made that commitment uh, and the money is sort of sitting there, right? I mean, the money has not been spent that they committed in late May, so that's there. And they can actually jump in and say to, to uh, whatever, Commerce Bank in Germany, here's the money, right? But the EU rarely moves quickly on anything. I mean, that's do you think true. the process is going to be uh, tied up uh, quickly enough for investors to, to be happy no, about it? No, it's not. I think this is going to be one of these things that's going to give the euro uh, something to chew on again and uh, there's no question that what we've seen over the last couple of days really is in anticipation of that I think. Now do you think that publishing these results has been a necessity? I mean we've seen the markets calm considerably since Spain led the EU down this path. Right, right, right. Uh, now I wonder if it's going to produce the opposite effect. Well, it's, it's not going to produce anything very good because it can't for the reasons I mentioned. But, but um, importantly, uh, you know, if you're going to do this kind of thing, you have to do it the way it was done in America, in a transparent manner. And transparency is not the strength of European regulators or European right. banks. Okay? And, and if we don't get that transparency, does the EU then lose credibility? I mean, how confident are you in the EU? Do you think it's going to break up eventually? Are you, one uh, of, are you in that camp? I'm, I'm sort of in that camp. I mean, I don't know if it's going to take five years or eight or whatever, but essentially I think that uh, as it is presently organized, the Eurozone is an unviable currency zone. Do you see a double dip in Europe? Uh, I see a double dip in Europe. Uh, Germany may help uh, keep it just afloat uh, if exports uh, to Asia remain strong. Uh, but that's sort of a dual kind of situation. You know, the Asians are hoping that Europe is strong and the Europeans are hoping that Asia is strong. Yeah, of course. And what about the U.S.? What did you make of what Ben Bernanke had to say? Did that uh, worry you at all? didn't worry me because he said, you know, the, the FOMC said exactly the same thing a couple of weeks ago in the minutes. So uh, I don't think that's a big issue there. I think the market was on edge. And when he, when he started talking about uncertainty, people got worried. So. And all of this plays into Asia, as you say, because, of course, Asia it will be hoping that the U.S. and Europe yes. don't slow down, but it looks like they're going to. There's no question that they will. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the extent of the slowdown is the real issue. I think the U.S. will avoid a double dip. Uh, okay. But we'll know more about this tonight with the housing numbers, the labor. Those are right. two big so markets. Watch out for right. those. Yeah. Uwe Parpart from Cantor Fitzgerald, chief economist and strategist here in Asia. We appreciate you joining us.